Greetings to everyone. I've been asked by Daniela to do a short introduction on design thinking for learning design. I'm sorry I can't be with you today, but I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun and I wish you all the very best um, with your journey, your learning journey on this course. So who am I? I teach at the Department of Architectural Technology and Interior Design. I'm based at the Media City building. We're on the foreshore in Cape Town and I teach in the architecture studio and my interest has grown in the field of learning design which is very much linked to design in general. So my previous work Recent work has involved projects with Dr. Nicola Pallet from UCT, Professor Gronje Knoll from the UK, and Professor Johannes Kronier, my own dean and supervisor, and Liza Hitchi, who has just completed her master's um, in educational technology at UCT. And through all of these workshops and projects, I've um, learned a great deal, and uh, I'm very keen to share that with you. So let's just look at what is learning. Learning is very difficult to describe or to actually capture, but I like this definition. The activity or process of gaining knowledge or skill by studying, practicing, being taught or experiencing something. The activity of someone who learns, that's all about the verbs and the action and the doing. The evidence of learning is change in behavior. So how will we know whether or when learning has happened? People must behavior behave or perform differently there should be evidence in in how they do things now equally difficult how do we design um, how do we how do we define design uh, easiest for me is to start with what is design not design is not just planning a course it is not just picking a solution and it's not just mixing and matching it's not about selection it's really an innovative process of problem solving and it's a very very difficult and messy process so if it's painful <laughs> you're probably doing it right it's not it's not an easy process but it's very rewarding and it's about pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and looking at at non-conventional and different ways of of doing things so you cannot hold design in your hand. It's not a thing. It's a process, a system, a way of thinking. Another way to put it is a creative process of thinking backwards from people. So the end result of how we will help facilitate the change in behavior, looking backwards. That leads to design of a service, a product, etc., based on the conclusions of the knowledge gathered in the process. And then Brian Lawson asks whether we really need a simple definition of design or should we just accept that it's simply too complex a matter to be summarized. He was referring to his book. I quite like the work of Brian Lawson. He's an architect, but he writes on design in general and has produced quite a number of seminal um, works in this regard. So learning design for me is designing learning experiences. It's definitely a design thinking approach. If you Google learning design, you'll find any number of methods. But for me, it's it's a mindset more than a method. Regardless of what method you use, you need a designerly way of knowing and thinking to apply whatever method that you find useful. So the focus is on the learning experience and not the technology. It is innovative and not procedural. It's not a tick box process. It's not like we said earlier, it's not about picking a solution. It's definitely not a linear process. It's iterative. It goes around, around, around in circles. And that's a frustrating bit. So in learning design, we borrow from other fields, user experience, information architecture, interaction design, experience design, service design, human-centered design, architecture design, and universal design, and the list goes on. In all of this, whatever approach or process or method you use, the kind of mindset qualities that we need uh, for me boils down to empathy. And um, that is about focus on the learner and the learning experience because that's, those are the 
the people for whom we will be designing. Again, back to Brian Lawson, uh, the bottom diagram talks about design process as a negotiation between the problem and the solution through three activities of analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Meyer and Poon talks about designers playing around with ideas to get more understanding about the problem rather than focusing on just finding a solution. This is often the problem for me is that we rush to find a solution without properly understanding the problem. So this again talks about um, always toggling between those three uh, or toggling between the two different spaces, the problem and solution space using these three um, modes or activities of analysis, understanding the problem, synthesis is making sense of it, evaluation is, is adding judgment to it, and then again we, we start the cycle again, the iterative process. So you will find in the literature a whole lot of many, many uh, processes um, which unfortunately often get de depicted in a linear kind of sense. Um, understanding the problem observing is really really important defining the problem then ideating is about finding a whole lot of possible uh, solutions prototyping trying it testing it and then you start all over again so just different ways of saying the same thing in all of this there are two different modes of thinking divergent thinking that's about opening up and looking at different possibilities and convergent thinking is focusing it down and judging and, and um, adding value to to or selecting or um, um, to some extent consolidating yes that's on the slide so it's about moving it's also referred to as a double diamond um, model where you where you do brainstorming and so you are going to divergent mode, you consolidate, you go divergent again, consolidate until you have a workable prototype that you can again test, reflect on, implement, try and, and so on. So the people, the gurus that I draw my inspiration from, of course, just a few because there's so many people and we have, these are just, um, um, practitioners from abroad of course we have amazing people in our own country um, that you'll meet in this course and that will be exposed to but looking further abroad i uh, look to joyce seitzinger connie malamed diana laurelard and Grania for um, um, really uh, worthwhile resources and and inspiration and then i'm not going to dwell on this but there are very useful tools out there that you can uh, used to help you with learning design and, and again it's not about the tool not about even the method but it's about the mindset of being open to explore and to be brave enough to try things and not to be too careful <laughs> try and innovate and break out of the box so again more information wonderful case studies to look for examples uh, Daniela has also co-authored with um, uh, colleagues, um, this wonderful resource, Emerging Technologies in Higher Education, the Guide for Higher Education Practitioners in 2013, etc. So there are also many more. And then, of course, on social media, you can follow various uh, sources and um, pages, etc. I like um, Joyce's Academic Tri blog. Uh, I've got a page on a group rather in Facebook, Learning Design and Design Learning. Yes, I mean, there, there are so many places where you can find inspiration and get feedback on your work. And I also have this blog that you can look at um, and please contact me, engage with me. I hope to meet you later on in the course. And it's very nice to, um, to be able to do this introduction. I hope um, it's uh, been useful.